You're listening to New Talk on WNSR New School Radio. In this episode, I focus on women. That's right, I'm a feminist. All of these women have paved the way for other women in their own right. Joyce Stanley Johnson, as a political activist and candidate for Congress, and Trudy L. Mason, also as an activist and Democratic district leader, I would like to welcome these phenomenal women to WNSR New School Radio. How does my voice sound? My voice sounds good. Yes, testing, testing. Okay. I talk about your work on the Obama campaign. You were the New York State field director. Yes. In 2007, it was not the most popular thing to do to um, join the Obama campaign as one of two staffers in the state um, when clearly I've been known as a woman's political activist, as a Democratic insider, and certainly a New Yorker, not to you know support someone who was a senator from Illinois. But I felt it was the right thing to do. So I galvanized the state. I, I um, organized the state. I was the state petition coordinator initially, then field director. It was the most thrilling campaign I have ever done, and I have done many, because I saw people for a first time so selfless about their politics. When I asked them if they were willing to um, pledge to be delegates and run as delegates, they didn't even know what that meant. All they knew was that I want to help this man become the president of the United States. And so it was something that will be in my heart for life. And I, outside of my own win for Congress, I can't imagine a better time than that campaign. And now you're running your own campaign for Congress. I don't even know what district it. What number is the district now? Uh, it was the 15th congressional district, basically representing above 96th Street, um, or northern Manhattan. It is now the 13th congressional district, which is is the northern Manhattan district and some parts of the Bronx. If I'm not mistaken, you're the only female uh, running in that race against the. Uh, Charlie Rangel Espaliat, who is the state senator. Talk about your presence as a woman in the race and how important it is for female candidates to be represented in the political process. I think it's an important for female candidates to be represented in, in the process, frankly, any process, not in jobs and employment, but certainly in politics that we are 17 percent of the, those elected in state houses and the Congress and around the country. And yet we are better than 50 percent of the population and better than 50 percent of the, 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 the voting population. What most most recently um, brought that to mind you remember a couple of, of um, weeks ago, the uh, congressional panel to talk about the women's productive rights, health, and all. And all I saw on that, that first panel, and they say the first panel are always the ones who are the, the most prestigious, the most listened to, all males in black suits. There wasn't a woman there to speak on behalf of, of, um, of women. And let's be, let's be clear. While there are progressive men, no one can speak to my issues better than me. When around the country they're now talking about um, invasive procedures regarding a women's, women's health, you cannot, you know, that invasive procedure might not be invasive to you, but it is to me because I know how it feels. So it's time for women to have that place at the table, the legislative table. Because we are overwhelmingly, certainly in communities of color, we are overwhelmingly single heads of households. So financial issues around equal pay, um, issues around um, child protection, issues around domestic abuse and, 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 and the safeguards there, issues of every nature affects us. And we need to have a voice. We need to be at least 51 percent of legislatures in every at all levels local, state, and federal, and in my case, in Congress. Have you faced more discrimination being an African-American or an African-American woman, or both? You know, th this is a hard question, and you don't want to say one or the other because to say one or the other says, yes, I've been discriminated against, and the short answer is yes, I have. It, is never, it has never hampered me, but I honestly do believe that even in the last two political races especially, Congress in 2010, where I was the only woman, 
in in this current race where I'm the only woman currently. When I was in uh, the first African American, the first woman in a production plant in um, Dundalk, Maryland, a Seagram plant, I was the one that was told that I should um, stay home with my husband and my child, and that I was taking a job away from a man. And some of my colleagues um, suggested that I would never be president or, you know, rise to the level of any great importance and stature in, within Seagram because I was simply a woman. So um, it, that, that's hard to admit, but, but, it, but it's real. Um, with that said, we push forward. George Johnson, I thank you for coming in, and I appreciate your time. I th- always appreciate your, your giving me this opportunity to speak my mind. Thank you, Roy. Trudy L. Mason, it's an honor and a privilege to have you here. Uh, can you talk about what piqued your interest in getting involved in political issues? Well, when I was 14 years old, I heard Adlai Stevenson make his concession speech when he said, I feel like the small boy who, as, as Abraham Lincoln said, he quoted Lincoln and said, I feel like the small boy who has stubbed his toe. It hurts too much to laugh, but I'm too old to cry. And I said, I just said, I have to do something to help Adlai Stevenson. And so I started getting involved in politics. Actually, my interest had been piqued long before that because my father was a labor leader, and so I was literally brought up on a picket line. So my politics have always been quite left of center, to put it mildly. And then I heard John Kennedy in 1960 at one of his last speeches in Boston Garden say, politics is not a dirty word. And that was in my freshman year, and we did not have a Young Dems at Wheaton. So I helped found the Young Dems at Wheaton, got involved in his campaign. I still have a button that says, uh, has a picture of John Kennedy and says, our president, I told you so. Young women today don't realize what we went through. Going to a women's college, and that's why women's colleges were so important in the 60s and the 70s. Gloria Steinem has talked about that an awful lot because we came to realize that we were the editors of the school paper. We were the head of the College Government Association. We were the students you know, who were taking the lead in everything. And yet when, upon graduation, when they came to recruit, all they wanted to know is, can you type? And can you take shorthand? And how fast can you type? I lied. I lied during all my interviews because I was not going to be, while the young men were being recruited to be, to go into publishing and become junior editors or what have you, the women were recruited to be secretaries. And I wasn't going to let that happen. I wanted to work at the UN. I spoke five languages. I had all kinds of skills. I had all these fancy degrees and honors programs. And all they wanted to know is whether I could type and take shorthand. And uh, through a various wonderful combination of stuff, mainly because I spoke Russian, I had studied Russian, and which is back in the early 60s was as important as knowing Arabic these days. Not too many people did. I was able to land my dream job at the UN, in the UN Information Services, and that's when Adlai Stevenson, what we go, talk about going full circle, he was then the ambassador to the UN, so I got to meet and know Adlai Stevenson, which was one of the great thrills of my life and still is. I had the opportunity to interview Lily Ledbetter from the Ledbetter Fair Pay oh, Act. Lily. And I asked her, I said, uh, you know, we know that the fight isn't over. Equality has not uh, been equalized. The question is, however, what do we have to keep doing to ensure equality? 
Well, I don't know if we're ever going to ensure equality. The first thing is that maybe someday, and I'm working with Congresswoman Maloney and a lot of other members of Congress on this, is to pass the ERA, which most people think that we have, but we still do not have an Equal Rights Amendment. I mean, it is as simple as that, but we still don't have it, and most people think that we do. But what else can we do? We just have to keep on fighting. We have to keep on doing what you're doing right now. Well, Lily Ledbetter, who was not a feminist, who was not a fighter, but felt that she had been wronged. We still don't earn the same, but Lily found out, and she took the fight, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court, which ruled against her because of a technicality. But then a lot of women in Congress, we need more women in elective office. We need more women all over the place, speaking out, having in positions where they can do some good. I have a soapbox. I have a title. I'm a Democratic State Committee woman. Used to be a commissioner. We live in a world where you're known by your title and your position. But once you have a soapbox and you can speak out, you speak out and you get the message out, thanks to people like you, that we have to keep on fighting. We are still fighting the fight, but thanks to people like Lily Ledbetter, who was not going to let go and kept the fight going until we got a Democratic majority in Congress who were able to pass that legislation, the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Bill. And God bless Lily, who went all around the country and still does and is still just, uh, I am honored to call her a friend. I mean, I know, I met Lily during her fight, and I said, this is the kind of woman, because she was never what you, you know, the, the, the stereotype of the feminist, but she was going to fight her fight. She became what we would now call a feminist, which, by the way, just like John Kennedy said, politics is not a dirty word. Feminist is not a dirty word either. On that note, I thank you. On behalf of everyone who is fighting the good fight, thank you for coming in. Thank you, and thank you for all you do. Thank you for listening. This is Roy Paul for WNSR New School Radio.